Hey, what's up everybody? Pastor Matt here. Wanted to do another quick book recommendation. Uh, this is a book that I've wanted to get for a long time. It's called Reformation Worship, Liturgies from the Past for the Present, edited by Jonathan Gibson and Mark Erngey, forward by Sinclair Ferguson, who you probably know. Um, yeah, I wanted to get this book for a long time. This is a book about worship. It's about liturgies, especially from the Reformation era. Now, if you attend a church that is liturgical, uh, then this book is going to be highly valuable to you. And if you attend a church that's non-liturgical, it may be of lesser value, but still deep inspirational or devotional value, value to you. Let's define a liturgical church as one that has a, an order of worship that is fairly thoughtfully ordered um, a worship service in which elements like benedictions, calls to worship, prayers of confession, uh, the Lord's Supper, um, the sacraments of both Lord's Supper and baptism, if those things have highly thought through and ordered formats in your church, then let's just call that a liturgical church. And what, what this book does is it takes you through the liturgies of the Reformation era, uh, beginning with Martin Luther's liturgy, um, let's see, Martin Luther's German Mass, 1526, uh, and it goes all the way in time through the Middleburg liturgy of the English Puritans in 1586. So that's a pretty that's a pretty tight window of time there, the 1500s, uh, High Reformation era, and uh, some of the other liturgies that are going to be included in this book would be John Ocolampadius of the uh, the German Reformed Church. You've got Ulrich Zwingli of the uh, the Swiss Reformed Churches. You have Miles Coverdale, Martin Butzer, John Calvin, of course, Thomas Cranmer of the English, uh, the English Reforming Church, John Knox of the Scottish Presbyterian, um, and so on and so forth. And basically what this book does is it takes you through their liturgies, and it, it gives you pretty much what you would expect if you were to actually attend the churches of that time. What would they do? What would they pray? How would their services progress? Um, so it takes you through... Uh, the various prayers, especially and including communion prayers. Um, let's just have a look at this one here from Um Shows you the prayers that they would speak, some of the responses that would be expected from uh, the people, what other elements of the worship service, including the reading or singing of psalms uh, and other, and other hymns, if, if they included hymns. And I find that just reading through this, like here's a, <clears throat> here's a typical organizing section here of the Order of the German Mass, 1524, Invocation, Confession, Absolution, the Kyrie, Gloria Patri, uh, the Epistle, the Gospel, the Nicene Creed, and so on and so forth. And it shows you how exactly they ordered their worship services in those times. Uh, the stuff on Calvin is excellent. It compares his Strasbourg liturgy of 1545 to his Genevan liturgy of 1542 and 1566. Um, and this is rich not only in devotional material for those of you who'd like to, uh, to read the prayers that they used in the Reformed churches during those times, but also if you'd like some ideas for your own liturgical worship services. If you happen to have responsibility in your church for planning the worship services and you'd like some ideas for your calls to worship or your prayers of confession or your pastoral prayers, this book is going to be an absolutely rich resource into building those worship services around the Word of God and comparing the ordering of liturgical worship services in various eras uh, and places in the 1500s Reformed churches. Okay, so I'm going to post a link to this book in the description of this video. If you'd like to grab it, go over there on Amazon, toggle down on the description, and get yourself Reformation worship. Thanks for checking in. Love you lots, and talk to you later.